Motorbikes rule the streets of Indonesia. Synonymous with the middle class, they allow Indonesians a shot at upward mobility. But after hours, the ubiquitous motorbikes are a key part of a more dangerous economy. This is the high-stakes world of illegal drag racing. Teenagers as young as 12 participate in these races. They promote themselves on Instagram, and winners can make a small fortune from a single race. However, the risks are just as high as the rewards. Accidents like this are a deadly reminder of the dangers of illegal drag racing. There are legal racing events, but street racing still persists. Ias, our Vice Indonesia correspondent, heads to the suburbs of Jakarta to meet a rising star in the local drag racing scene. 16-year-old Eza Wira Admaja dropped out of school and left his family's home to race. On the weekends, he participates in legal racing events. Despite his success there, Eza still races illegally on the street. Gimana nih kabarnya? Gimana? Sehat? Eh. Yes, the entire riders. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Yes, shit, man. <laughs> Tau ya, shit doang, man. Baru dirapiin sih. Baru dirapiin nih? Iya. Yeah. Oh, ini Eza tinggal di sini nih, berarti? Iya. Yeah. Ini tuh motor-motor resmi atau liar? Ini resmi. Ini liaran, liar. Pokoknya yang joknya kayak gini tuh liaran. di dunia balap ini liar dan resmi berapa lama? Dari kelas 5 SD ke sekarang udah kelas 1 SMA. Emang hobi bener-bener hobi dari kecil. Pengen punya prestasi, pengen jadi pembalap. Pokoknya berjuang mati-matian dari kecil lah buat jadi pembalap. As a rides for Kawahara. The team's owners convinced him to drop out of school and leave his rural life behind. They promised him housing, tons of cash, and flashy gifts. At 16 years old, he's living far better than most working class Indonesians. Okay, udah nih mobil ada sekolah di sini, iPhone beliin sekolah sekolah terang mau pakai mobil atau motor di bilang. Eza pernah jatuh? Kalau jatuh sih udah, tangan sini patah nih pernah nih di sini. Luka luka gitu. Patah, ya? patah. patah. Kalau misalnya di dunia liar nih, siapa aja nih Pak Bendoko? Banyak sih, dari bos yang di drag, tim drag, nggak ngedukung kalau liaran. Terus dari nyokap, bokap, nggak ngedukung. Ya gimana ya, sekalian ngelemasin juga kan kalau di sini kan, apa kalau nggak ada kegiatan, kalau siang, malam, cuma kan kita tidur, nonton TV. Udah ada yang Eza tahu dan menjadi almarhum gara-gara balap? Udah tahu banyak, cuma temen dekat Ezer, temen dekat banyak, makanya kan kalau di Star aja nggak ada, nggak uh, ada yang nutupin nih anak-anak di sini, Eja ke finish, Eja omelin tuh salah satu. Lu mau jagain di Star apa enggak? Kalau enggak, mending lu nih bawa sendiri, gue pulang, gue mau tidur gue bilang. Kalau dia kan enak, nonton pinggiran di finish kan, kalau kita yang bawa nyawa. Secara nominal nih lebih gede ketika balap resmi apa liar? Kalau di hitung-hitung banyakkan liaran. Banyakkan liaran. Banyakkan liaran cuma kan kalau liaran jarang ada musuh yang mau. Sebulan tuh biasa berapa kali musuh nyari? Empat. Kadang biasanya taruhannya 5 juta. Dari uang tersebut biasanya Eza gunain buat apa nih? Paling beli barang-barang. Menang berapa? Abisnya buat beli rokok. Enggak enggak kehitung rokok berapa. Ias travels to Bandung, four hours outside of Jakarta, to attend a legal racing event. The air stinks of exhaust and oil. It's legal races like this where Eza earns a living. David Cassidy works with these racing machines. He's a fixture at Eza's races. Kenapa Bapak milih Eza Cemong untuk mengendarai motor yang udah Bapak utak atik? Udah nggak diragukan lagi itu joki papan atas lah istilahnya ya. Udah dikenal ya? Misalkan motor pitnya 90 persen dipakai joki dia, ya keluar motornya 90 persen. Gitu. 
kalau misalkan dipakai orang lain, misalkan yang masih belajar itu, motor 90% kondisi hasilnya paling 80. Gitu. Sedikit orang yang bisa begitu sih. Porsinya kalau untuk balapan, bagian saya 50, beres sama saya, bagian dia 50, beres sama dia, jadi 100% gabung gitu. Oh. Menghasilkan yang bagus, hasil yang bagus. Ini Pak, Ezra Cemong setahu saya lomba balap liar. Ya. Menurut Bapak, opini Bapak gimana? Kalau kata saya mending ditinggalin lah, mending balapan resmi aja, udah jamin kok. He needs to regularly place in sheets to maintain sponsorship deals that make racing possible. Everything from his helmet and racing gear to his stable of motorbikes is paid for by sponsors. Eja, hari ini tuh optimis nggak nih bakal menang? Tahu lah, sama aja. Yang lain kayaknya sibuk. Utang kartik aja dari tadi diem aja ngerokok, kayak santai banget, kayak nggak deg-degan banget berarti ya. Today, Eza is racing with his friend, Oki Chaba. Oki is older and more established in the scene. He also used to participate in street racing, but left because the risk was too great. Kenapa tuh? Kalau liaran kan, ya kalau lagi apat pasti jatuh atau apa. Iya, berarti Mas Oki pernah jatuh dong? Pernah. Di mana tuh Mas Oki? Oh ini? Akan jatuh semua. Emang benar, kena kubir. Karena kan kalau liaran, apa uang taruhannya kan memang bisa lebih batas. Kadang ada yang main 100 juta, ada yang 200 juta. Cuman ya sebagian lah nyawa. Iya sih, ya, nyawa ya lebih daripada karir. It was a good day for Eza, but successes like this aren't enough to pay the bills. Eza still needs to win illegal street races to keep the money rolling in. Eos returns to the suburbs of Jakarta for race night. Eza has told the crew to come by midnight for the illegal street race. The crew waits in the car for the signal that the race is on. So I just went inside, talked to the guys, and they said lately, the last two races, they started at 7, even 9 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why, I think, I don't know, they just overslept and decided to do it in the morning, I don't know, but we're less cops, but I think it's going to be similar to that right now, because it's just started raining and nobody wants to race you know, in the rain. At the same time, I don't want to stay here till 7. It's 6.30, we're on the move, it's about time. Um, we're on our way to the track. Is this in a car? Perasaan lo gimana biasanya kalau mau udah mau balapan gini? Ya, kita gak. kebiasaannya. There's 2 million rupiah, or about 140 US dollars, riding on this race. In Indonesia, that's about a month's salary. 
Ezra says he doesn't care, but is determined. There's more than money at stake. There's pride. Apparently, apparently they're they're the big. He's he's the big guy. He he's the one who deals with the cops. If it's like if it's getting out of control or they pitch up out of the blue, and he's the guy who's gonna give the cops money to say, hey, I need ten minutes. Here's a few cash for you. Give my kids like some time. So he's the guy. I think I think Chemong lost. But did you did you see that? Did you see how they 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 flew? They their legs were high. They the wind got what? I'm speechless. What? That just happened. So they're putting the, the the bikes back, and and like now the streets are back active. Like regular cars started coming in, so somebody must have stopped it over there. Is that? Mau ngobrol bentar apa gimana? Mau bentar aja kapan-kapan aja gitu ya? Ayo. Ya udah pamit aja nih, Zak. Siap. Siap. Makasih banyak ya, Zak. Siap, siap, siap. Hey, say goodbye. So, we've been trying to talk with Ezza uh, after the race. And I think he's just tired. And the fact that he lost in front of many people and he wouldn't want to talk in front of the camera. I mean, I understand. I'd do the same thing if, I, if two million just left, just gone in a minute. So, that's it. I guess that's it for the day. The local police know that the town has become a mecca for illegal street races. Units like this confiscate hundreds of motorbikes a year. But the races, as well as injury and death, continue. The apa namanya modif ya? The modif seperti ini sudah nggak ada plat nomor, sudah nggak ada lampu. Sudah nggak ada sepion. Hanya untuk mengikuti tren? Ngikutin tren aja. Ini tuh ada berapa motor, Bu, di sini? Setiap minggu itu kita paling nilang, kalau di wilayah seperti ini ya 30. 30 motor? 40 motor. Uh, motor. Dalam, seminggu. Dalam seminggu. Dalam seminggu. Pokoknya kalau nggak diambil ya sudah. Sekian tahun nggak diambil, dikubur. Rata-rata mereka masih anak SMP gitu anak SMA yang baru kelas satu gitu. Jadi mereka belum benar-benar sadar hukum gitu, belum mengerti gitu dan belum seharusnya dia naik motor itu. Dengan model-model dibeliin motor sama ibunya, bapaknya dia prodolin, dibikin kayak macam itu. Mereka rata-rata bukan orang sini asli. Jadi mereka dari Pamulang, dari Kebayoran, dari Jakarta, dari Bogor gitu. Karena apa? Situasi jalannya masih Tidak bagus bukan. untuk 
balap liar gitu. Mereka curi-curi, mereka tahu-tahu ada di lokasi. Dia itu rata-rata tidak tidak mengenal yang namanya bahaya gitu. Karena kalau kita kejar nih, kita kejar di situ ada garis kejut gitu. Dia tetap biarpun dia sampai loncat di barannya, sampai jatuh pun dia nekat gitu. Dikejar dia pergi. Malah kadang suka ngeledek sama kita gitu. Tonight, the police are on the lookout for illegal drag racers. They search for packs of kids on motorbikes who look suspicious. It seems impossible to stop street racing entirely. Instead, the police try to interrupt the races. We just kept on chasing until they disappear. That's basically it. It's a dangerous cat and mouse game that seems to have no end in sight. Young people will continue to be drawn to illegal street racing by promises of money and fame. And the police will always be tailing them.